I hated his face the first time I saw him. I feared it for many years. Then I learned the truth. I despised his face the moment it came into my view. That patchy beard, the double chin, the unkempt hair that seemed untouched by water. When he barked at us to lie down, fear nearly made me soil the new rug beneath me. A mess I'd have to clean if he weren't in our lives. Beside me, my mother lay silent, her presence so faint I strained to hear her breathe. With eyes shut, I imagined the rug was the familiar one at my grandparents, a sanctuary far from this terror. Don't move an inch, or you'll regret it for life. His voice cracked with a nervous edge, betraying the menace he tried to portray with the small black handgun at his side. Dad led him away, to where our valuables were kept. The thief returned laden with our possessions, but it was the loss of my Xbox, my luxury watch, and the cash that ignited a fury within me. As the door slammed shut, my mother's embrace was the only solace to my tears, her promises of a new Xbox, a faint balm to the wound. Years faded, but the shadow of that day grew longer, enveloping my father. Once a towering figure, his essence has been eroded by Alzheimer's, leaving behind a shell. The vibrant man who led with authority was no more, his legacy reduced to the drool my mother tenderly wiped away. That night, when our security was shattered, marked the beginning of our family's unraveling. Then came the second invasion on the heels of my ninth birthday. The same loathsome face stood at our doorstep, his presence an unspoken threat that silenced the room. My father's plea for mercy was met with a chilling calm. The man's interest momentarily caught by the remnants of my birthday celebration. He took it all, my new games, my hopes, and left behind a trail of fear and loss. My father's empty promises of recovery and justice sounded hollow, his shame the only thing more palpable than my own despair. In the years that followed, the thief's periodic returns were a grim reminder of our vulnerability. I hid my treasures, clinging to the hope that my grandfather's lucky coin buried beneath my socks would somehow protect me. But with each visit, a piece of my spirit was stolen, leaving me hollow. The final encounter broke the cycle. I was older, stronger, and fueled by a rage that had been simmering for years. Confronting the thief in the open field, I was prepared for violence, but found something unexpected. The revelation of his identity and motive unraveled the narrative I had clung to. He was not just a thief, but a victim of my father's cruelty, driven to desperation and seeking justice in the only way he knew how. As he handed back the stolen coin, the symbol of my lost innocence, I realized the depth of our mutual destruction. His apologies, though heartfelt, couldn't undo the damage. But in that moment of shared vulnerability, my hatred for him dissolved into pity. Leaving him behind, I walked home under the moonlit sky, contemplating the complex tapestry of emotions and relationships that had defined my life. The hatred, the fear, and finally, a semblance of understanding, all intertwined in the haunting memory of his face. Follow for part two.